Dlaczego maluje obrazy? Bo bardzo lubię malować. W malarstwie dla, jest jakby sprawa wzrokowa i świadomości takiej poprzez ten kod, który wizualizacja występuje. Oczywiście jako człowiek się jest również w przestrzeni społecznej wobec innych i twórczość, która nabiera swojego wyrazu jest jakby też odkryciem siebie samego w stosunku do innych, również jakby do historii sztuki. Przychodziłem rano, karton i hajda, nie? Także to powstawało trochę w innej okoliczności, ten, ten cały zestaw tych obrazków. Brałem aparat, nie? Wchodziłem na kolejny motyw i, i jazda, nie? Także to przecież niecałe dwa miesiące namalowałem i to bez jakiegoś tam wysiłku. No i tyle, już, już się to zapakowało, że już dosyć, nie? Jakby nie, nie takie nasycenie, nie? Także... Chciałbyś się dowiedzieć, dlaczego namalowałem Bydgoszcz. To, to jest główny powód przyciągnięcia mnie tutaj. No bo to chyba jest powinność, żeby namalować coś o miejscu, w którym się jest. Chyba jest to powinność. Jeżeli na nią stać samego siebie, że można coś takiego zrobić, no to się robi tak jak wszystkie inne rzeczy już czy jest związek z miastem? taki, że miasto gada do ciebie? ja nie wiem ale wydawało mi się, że gada że ma przejęty i że warto o tym powiedzieć To już nie są tamte czasy, kiedy działaliśmy sztandarowo, ideowo, tylko po prostu to miasto się skarży cicho. Chyba już sobie też odpuściło, jak większość z nas. A reszta to tylko farby i szybkie decyzje. I to wszystko, żeby za długo się nie patrzeć, bo nie wypada. Nie wypada patrzeć na starych, zniszczonych ludzi zbyt długo w ich twarz. Uśmiechnij się, teraz tutaj przechyl głowę, to będzie bardzo ładne. Na pamiątkę, uwiecznić. Chuj. Tak jak ludzie się mijają na szybkie cześć, cześć, tak samo się mija te domy i ulice. To jest tyle. Sądzę, że w moim przypadku nie potrafiłbym na dłuższą metę zajmować się innym zajęciem niezwiązanym z malarstwem.
I'm from Belgium. I live in New York though, in Queens. My music inspiration is my inner voice, or I should say, my inner voices. I hear inside, I listen inside to what's happening. I think it's my brain, but it's my brain captures the voice and the soul of uh, my ancestors through my fingers and my brain and my instrument, I, I give life to their song, to their chant. fan of Bruce Lee. I'm a big fan of um, Leonardo da Vinci. I'm a big fan of Benjamin Franklin. And I love a lot of gods, especially uh, Ganesh. He's a big inspiration to me. I like to do things with my hands. I would be an architect or a, a modeler or some kind of sculptor. I could be an instrument maker. I, I repair my saxophone. Music is the breathing that you can only hear actually during silence and um, it's very big part of life I think all the gods exist all of them the Indian one the whatever you call them and I uh, I'm really grateful to them in general Sometimes I'm angry, I'm really upset at them, so, but I think they're doing a, a great job, pretty much. I imagine death as um, rotting. It's not really death because worms come to life, mushrooms come. Sometimes I envy rocks because they look like they can never die. When we die, well, I never try it. When people die, they stop breathing and they beat, their heart stop beating. Maybe death is, a, is the only real silence. I'm from Brockton, Massachusetts, the home of Rocky Marciano. My musical inspiration is uh, just life in general, the, the events that uh, people have to face, reality, um, not reality. <laughs> Religious person, I don't believe in in, in any kind of um, organized religion or or any kind of conventional um, practice like 
Catholicism. But I have, I do have a strong belief that God is a part of my music and a part of of what allows me to to have um, visions and inspirations. But I believe that through through drumming and through my music, I see I see God, and and that is the God that 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 I believe is is my music. And um, I believe that this uh, this this attitude um, is will. will Pro, uh, pro move me forward in the future and really be able to see uh, who, who I am and, and what kind of person I am becoming and what kind of person I should become. <laughs> Silence can can really allow you to um, to really uh, develop ideas and be able to um, not just let it breathe. You know, everyone feels like they have to just uh, keep going, keep going, keep talking. It's like going out with someone for dinner and they never stop talking. You know, I mean, for me, to me, that's that's very boring if someone never stops talking. I teach uh, children, uh, and um, I tell them that there's there's everyone hears sound. There is sound. There are two types of sounds that exist. There's music and there's noise. You know, this is something. But if I What did I do? It's still sound. I'll give the first example I was doing this. The only thing that was different was I organize. I organize the sound into something and that's that's what music is. Music is, is organized sound and noise is unorganized sound. How do I imagine death? Uh, not hearing anything. That's death. <laughs> not not hearing. Uh, if I could not hear uh, uh, anything, um, that would be death. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, New York, for about eight years now. I, I met Sean back, the drummer back, um, God, somewhere in the 90s. And um, we went to school together, we gigged. And then right out of school, I had a gig in Florida playing show tunes on the contrabass for uh, homosexuals and um, elderly people. For about two hours every night, and Sean was on the drums, and I was like, "Fuck, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life." I write a lot of music. Sean and I started putting stuff together. Dan, my guy, the original sax player, was there also. We formed a band. I moved to New York about six months later. They did about a year later, and then we started trying to tour. And Dan left a couple years ago, and now uh, Paul is our new sax player, and it's going great. That's a short history.
I've, I've been lucky to have great parents and a great brother or great brothers. So they've inspired me. But and then musically, um, the, the list is huge. Charles Ives is one of my favorite composers. Mm -hmm. I like everything from uh, Japanese noise to country music. I, I, one of my favorite new records is, or it's not a new record, it's 1978, is Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson. So it's called Waylon and Willie. Great country songs. There's a great underground Brooklyn scene right now. And, you know, Manhattan, is, to me, is dead. Um, it's a great place if you want to see a superstar. There's, I don't, there's no real scene in Manhattan. There's a few performance places where the stars play. The downtown New York scene, you know, that's finished. I mean, there's the guys made it fam Some of the guys made it very, very big. They're famous now. And they just tour a lot. And they'll play in Satanic or some of these downtown the stone places like this. Some of them are out of the scene. Some of them have teaching gigs. Some of them, yeah, they're out of the scene. But it's not a scene. It's just there's some places for these stars to play. The real scene in New York right now is in Brooklyn. Um, Todd P is a promoter, puts on great shows. A lot of great noise, noisy bands. Um, but what's exciting about it is it's they're, they're in these warehouses. Kids can pay $5 to get in, get a beer for, for a dollar. I mean, they're all illegal things. But it can consolidate two, three, four hundred kids into these great shows. Silence, true silence, I think is almost impossible for humans to experience in, on Earth. There's, even if you go to the desert, there's wind and friction of the sand.
religious to my music, but I was not raised uh, in a, re- a family, uh, you know, believing in any, in any kind of organized religion. I witnessed my father die. So I, I got a pretty intimate um, <clears throat> experience with it. By the last 40 hours, it was, he was, you couldn't really have a conversation with him. He was talking, but it was, he was in and out of, he was having delusions, and I mean, he was on a lot of morphine too, so. Um, but I had some intense, he, he kind of told me in the hospital um, a hint um, about six or five months before that, you know, he's like, the brain is the last thing to go. And he, I think he was telling me this because he goes, even if the person looks dead, you know, the brain, this, they still know what's going on. So I had a pretty uh, intimate conversation with him at the end and it was, it was tough, but I knew he was uh, definitely hearing me. And, uh, and I think it was one, because he died the next morning. I went up there, up to his room and talked to him and yeah, the next morning he died. And when he was dead, yeah, it was a different person at that point. I mean, he was dead. And um, yeah, they took the body away, but it, it was extreme intense. It was very intense, but it was very graceful. And um, it's made me uh, less afraid of, of death. I'm still fucking totally afraid of it, don't get me wrong, but it's something that we, us as humans, are great at ignoring. And it's these situations that we have to really look at it, you know, unless you're, some people run away, but this is kind of a cowardly thing to do, I think. Mm-hmm.